wanting more questions, please go in the other rooms if you want to talk. Uh, let's go with Simon for the last talk this morning. It's actually afternoon, but I'm the person that got out, got went to bed at 4 a.m. today, so please bear with me. I haven't had lunch, so it's morning. <laughs> and if I wobble around, that's the after, after effects of that. So. Two, three weeks back, somebody complained that I had messed up a whole street in German, Germany. No, no, that's Simon Poole has mapped complete road wrong. I had actually never been there and I've never mapped there. But um, I think it does show something we all screw up now and then. And one of the questions is, you know, what keeps you from inadvertently messing up OpenStreetMap? Well, it's not the API. You know, the API is the bit of our system which your editor interacts with where you when you're uploading data you're interacting with our API. All this stuff here is what's going on when you're editing in JOSM and it suddenly dumps you into onto the bridge of the enterprise. So this is stuff like, you know, the versions increase sequentially, the object is actually there. You're not deleting a node which is actually a member of a way which is still on the server and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know, most people don't know that, but you can actually have maximum 2,000 nodes in a way in OpenStreetMap. So it checks that as well. What it doesn't check is if the stuff that you're uploading actually has a correct geometry for example, um, you don't have self-intersecting ways. It doesn't check for compliance with tagging schemes. It has actually no idea that there are tagging schemes. And it doesn't really check anything else. Which explains why stuff like this is possible. Um, this is from Frederick's quality assurance site from OSM Inspector. These are actually ways which have duplicate nodes in them, that means that they have the same node twice adjacent in that way. It's not an awfully dreadful problem, but it's stuff that, you know, you would assume the API would not accept, but it does. And you notice that um, our German friends tend to be very good about fixing this stuff. I was a, I was a week late making this screenshot and all of them are gone. The density was roughly similar. You just don't edit. That's why you never make mistakes. So the thing that actually stops you from doing this stuff, or should stop you, is your editor, the tool that you use to add data to OSM. Should avoid breaking geometry. It should avoid creating these dupe nodes. It should support relations. This is something which I think we've got to the point now where all the more common editors actually support relations, but it wasn't the case way back. It has to understand tagging schemes. Question are, which ones? And what does that mean, understand tagging schemes? We're just editing geometry and adding tags. It should interact with existing current data in a reasonable form. I think, I don't know, most people have probably edited during a, a mapping party or something like that and have had the experience that they're actually uploading data which conflicts with data which is already on the server because somebody else edited it. And the longer you wait between editing the data and uploading it, the more conflicts you potentially get. And the same goes if you're actually using outdated data which is one of the issues with Maps Me. And, for example, if it displays imagery, which may or may not have large offsets, there should be some way of adjusting that. I'm just going to give an example why the tagging schemes are actually important. 
I assume here everybody has split away. Whoops, go back. Uh, wrong button, so. So there's a way there. Gierhaltenstrasse is just away from where I, li I live. Selected it, want to split it. It's a member of a relation. And what happened is now both segments are a member of that relation. That's the standard way to handle the situation. Except if this way happens to be a member of a turn restriction. If it's a turn restriction, adding both segments to the relation actually breaks the turn restriction. So your editor actually has to special case this. And when you split, I split this this way here at the pedestrian crossing. And this part is no longer a member of the relation afterwards. So it needs special code that knows, okay, this is a turn restriction. I have to check where I'm from or the to element. I have to find out on which side is the via node and then add the stuff correctly. There's a simple example. Most of us have probably reversed the way one day in, in our editor. Well, it isn't actually quite so simple. You rearrange the nodes, but you have to actually check. Are there non-reversible direction-dependent tags on this way? Um, for example, coastline, a cliff, or it's a city wall but only if it doesn't have the two-sided tag, you can't actually reverse the direction of that way without changing the meaning. City walls have a high and a low side. And if you simply reverse the way, you're changing the high and the low side. If you have reversible uh, tags, you have to check for all of those and turn them around. And your way might be a member in a root relation. You might have forward-backward tags. Have to change those as well. And things get really iffy if you're merging two ways, because now and then, to merge two ways, you actually have to change the direction of one of them. And you get all that on the previous page, plus you actually have to check for both ways. You have to check that the roles don't conflict, and so on. Now, people will say, okay, you know, that's because you're, you have this complicated editor, you, you want to edit geometry and all that, and that's why you get all these complications. But simple, you know, simple implies, and I don't know, was anybody in the session before where Rob was talking? Rob said, you know, people shouldn't have to know about OSM to edit OSM. So, you know, simple implies the user doesn't have to know about OSM. The problem is that implies the editor has to know everything about OSM, and that is really, really hard. And it's particularly hard because we have this free-form tagging schemes, and nobody actually has to go and register their new-fangled tagging scheme and tell editors, editor developers about it. So we can never really know all of OSM. And the more you go away from raw OSM data with your abstractions, the more difficult it gets. And I offer one example, ID area type. There's no area type in OSM. So when you draw a building in ID and you actually click on this area, um, thing, it's doing something which doesn't really exist as a, creating something which doesn't really exist in, OS, in the OSM data model. ID does this quite well. It maintains the integrity of the object, so if you actually split it, it turns it into a, if, if you've just drawn a simple closed way, it will actually turn it into a multi-polygon. Once it's done that, it can't actually simplify it anymore because, you know, uh, if I'm working on it, I save it, I've split this way, I save it, um, 
and I want to do something else, it can't suddenly turn back into a simple way. And it's potentially confusing for other mappers. So this is a building outline I draw. This is actually my house. And I split it. And you can actually see that it's turned it into a relation here with two parts, this way and the other way. And IT is really good about doing that because, for example, you can't actually unjoin this node. It will complain that it's part of a relation. I don't know why it suddenly talk, starts talking about relations here. It should talk about areas. And uh, it doesn't allow you to unjoin that, so this object maintains is a valid OSM object. And if you go and look at the data, you can actually see still these two parts, member of a relation, and so on. So that's all OK. It's just very confusing if you're using Potlatch or you're using JOSM, and you come upon this object and think, why the heck did somebody turn this into a multi-polygon? This, by the way, is the sandbox. Frederick was referring to before. So that's not how my, the place is mapped where, I'm, where I live. And the next thing that comes, okay, I'm going to really write this really, really simple editor which only edits tags. Points of interest can be modeled in very many ways in OpenStreetMap. They can be nodes, ways, clothes, ways. They can be relations. They can be a site relation, all kinds of things, multi-polygon and so on. Individual geometries can hold multiple objects. And tags can interact with geometry. In fact, I just showed you an example. Because all that means if you apply one of these tags to an object that you don't actually know which direction it is uh, pointing in, you're messing data up. And this is uh, another example. Um, this is a, a road in Germany somewhere, which is a tram line, and it's a surface road at the same time. And ID actually had a bug in early versions where it would assume that there's only one main object on every geometry. So if you had edited this with ID, with that buggy version, it would have removed one of these two uh, objects. And naturally the question is, okay, if this is so difficult, who protects you against broken editors? And the answer is very simple. Nobody. There is no verification. There is no validation. There is not even informal tests um, that, you know, say, okay, this program is not really broken. And um, there's, you know, they don't get blocked. So if you have a broken editor, you can be using it for years on end and produce broken stuff. Now, there is one singularity in the history of OpenStreetMap. I quickly want to show you this because this is really funny, particularly for the people that say ban potlatch. It's this mail from the 5th of July 2009. As some, of, some may have noticed, JOSM had a serious bug causing lat lon of nodes to be swapped when moving them and causing a chaos at some points. For details, look here. This is the actually only case in the history of OpenStreetMap where an editor was blocked because obviously the consequences of swapping lat long are fairly drastic. So um, I'm coming to the end. Now the question is, you know, where can you look up all this stuff? If you're a budding editor developer or if you want to choose an editor that actually works, where do you go? And the problem is there is no really real good place. This is one reason why I'm doing this talk. Um, there's a list in the wiki. That list is actually generated, was generated automatically from the descriptions of the individual programs. But that's been broken for two, three years. So the list itself is not updated. And the information in it is not really particularly relevant. 
and it's a big to-do for me to actually put something reasonable in place there. So, at the end, thank you. So, if you're not too angry, we will take questions. I'm a lazy programmer. I don't want to mess with all these uh, special cases. Uh, is there a list of uh, official libraries for editing who have uh, like nice Python package for reversing ways and doing all these checkups? Nope. Um, this is one of the things that was originally planned for ID before it was written, was that at least all the underlying stuff would be modular and you could actually build on top of it. That didn't actually happen. As far as I know, there's been an effort underway to address that and make ID a bit more modular, which would be a real boon for the people writing web editors because they could base their stuff on the logic in ID. And otherwise, uh, essentially, it boils down to the dev developers looking at the code from other people and stealing stuff which is okay. I wasn't controversial enough, obviously. Oh, I guess we will have lunch then. Yeah. Thank you, Simon.